All right, we just drove up north and uh, we're not gonna waste any more time. We're gonna rush out there. Talk to you in a second. All right, Upper Red Lake. We're finally out here. Quick little walk. I'll let you in on a little secret for how we found this spot. <laughs> we basically went, all right, we don't want to go too far out because then we got to walk back and uh, let's go where there's less houses. So we're going to drill some holes, get set up and uh, see if we can catch some fish. My drone batteries actually are not charged up so I won't be able to show you the sea of houses that probably get about 20 times as big as this once the weekend hits. But uh, yeah, we got good fishable ice up here and I think this is kind of the perfect place and the perfect opportunity to kind of uh, let you guys in on what I got going on the next several, several days, 30 days to be exact. Um, I'm gonna, I guess, embark on kind of a crazy mission that may or may not be a good idea and that is fishing for 30 days in a row out on the ice i'm super excited for ice season it's finally here and i'm going to spend 30 days in a row out here i'm going to put out a video for every single day that i'm out here fishing so it's kind of going to be a big project i got a little bit of help on the editing side of things but uh i'm really excited so hopefully you guys stick along for the journey and uh hopefully i don't go crazy by the end of it There we go. Wow, Brett's been kicking my butt. <laughs> now finally I am on the board. Not a bad one. Ooh. Awesome. So we actually got out this morning, not stupid early, and uh, it was a bit of a tough bite so far but now it's about lunchtime and finally the fish are starting to chomp brett just caught probably the biggest wall i've ever seen on a, <laughs> <laughs> on a dead stick that was a joke it was a tiny tiny little walleye i'm gonna have to get a players but yeah it's awesome i think the activity is finally starting to heat up it was a, a really hot weekend and and uh it's been a little bit slow today we just got out just a little bit after the weekend where everybody was out and busy it's still pretty busy for a, a tuesday but anyway i'm gonna go get a player quick and unhook this fish so first trip of the year obviously you're gonna be just like so far from dialed that it's not even funny but if there's like one thing that i feel like i'm somewhat dialed on on this very first trip of the year it is this dead stick setup which I think it's pretty fortunate since this is kind of a dead sticky sort of day. But I'm just gonna run through it really quick because I think it's a pretty good system that's really slick. So um, I guess what I'll do here is I'll reel it up and on the business end of things, basically I just have a single hook and you could run a treble as well. Um, kind of in that like, I don't know, roughly number two size or so. And I just got that tail hooked and then I have a couple split shots, a swivel, and this whole entire setup, the leader and the main line, is actually all five pound fluorocarbon or six pounds, something in there, I can't remember. I haven't re-spooled this year. Um, but kind of some of the most important parts of, these, of this entire setup is I actually have the tuned up dead stick rod here and I haven't really experimented with a lot of different rods for the whole dead sticking application. Um, so I can't say what's for sure the best, but I do like this particular setup. I like the high vis tip. And one thing that I think might be actually way more important than the rod for this particular setup is the reel. So I have the uh, Okuma bait feeder reel. And if you can get a, a good bait feeder reel, no matter what the brand is, that can be the absolute deal because all you gotta do is flick this switch right here and then line will come out extremely easily. And as you can see when I pull this, 
even when it's perfectly balanced, you're really not utilizing the soft tip at all really anyway. So me and Brett were actually talking about this. Having a nice dead stick rod can be really cool in a lot of cases, especially if you're using kind of a normal reel. If you're using one that has a really good drag system like that, you could actually get away with a little bit more of a uh, faster action rod that's a little stouter further up so you can get a better hook set and actually maybe have a better time fighting the fish as well and muscling the head up through the hole. So that's just something to consider as well when you're, uh, when you're thinking about rod choice. If you have the right reel, it might not be as important as you think it is. Um, but another thing, another part of this whole setup that I think kind of really makes it is I have a bucket right here, obviously, and then I have, this is, I believe Catch Cover makes this. This is uh, just their sort of dead stick holder deal. And you can just set that right in there. And what's cool is, let me reel this up a little bit. I didn't get it set up at the right depth. When a fish takes it, even if you don't necessarily have some, a reel with a super sensitive uh, drag, the fish will pull the tip down and this whole thing will rotate right here on this arm, which is just a really nice system. It definitely, it's super easy to set up and it's easy to pull out of there, but it's definitely better than, you know, the old rod on top of the bucket trick. So. Like I said, if there's anything that I feel like I'm somewhat dialed with right now, it's actually this uh, dead stick setup. And I'm gonna get it set at the correct depth. What I like to do if I'm not using a flasher is I'll drop it all the way down to the bottom and then I'll just reel up a little bit, set it in there, flick the switch and it's ready to go. And now I'm gonna go back to my jigging hole and I'm gonna work really, really hard and I'm not gonna catch any fish jigging. I'm just gonna wait for this to pop up <laughs> the way this day has been going, so. All right, beauty, another one on the dead stick and it's definitely turning into one of those days where the set lines are gonna be super important. Whether you're using the dead stick with the rod or you got tip ups or any of the above, sometimes that can be really critical and I've noticed you know, oftentimes when I come out here to red, oftentimes it can be really a dead sticky deal, but I just have a really simple setup. It's just a single pink hook, a couple little split shots right here with a swivel right above it. I think all of this entire setup is either five or six pound fluorocarbon, so awesome. I don't know, uh, this one might be p potentially eatable. I'm not sure, but- Too big. A <laughs> little bit too big? I don't know. Anyway. Regardless, I'll get her unhooked, but awesome. They're starting to bite. So that right there was actually the first walleye that I have marked right here on my graft. Um, we've caught a couple of fish so far on dead sticks, but the jigging has not been the deal yet, which is kind of unfortunate because I wanted to play with this new Mega Live unit a little bit more, dial it in, see some fish, and uh, just kind of play with it, but Unfortunately, I've not been seeing a lot of fish coming in. I don't know if they're kind of turned off by the jigging or what the deal is. Brett's been marking a few fish, but it's been fairly quiet on the jigging side of things, which just means that the dead sticking is all that more important. If you're going out on the ice, it doesn't matter if it's early ice, it doesn't matter if it's in the middle when uh, the bite is really tough. You definitely want to have your set line options available because they can be a day saver. It can be fun to start with a more bigger, aggressive hard bait option. And then if the fish aren't reacting well to that, downsizing to a smaller spoon. And that is definitely true, but sometimes jigging isn't even the deal and the dead sticks are. So the whole idea with this 30 day, I guess you could say it's a challenge, is the fact that it's just something that's really hard to do. Now there's a lot of ice fishing guides that go out and they will grind out 30, 60 days in a row guiding. And that's a lot of work. It's tough on the body. It's uh, mentally exhausting. I don't think that I've ever seen anybody do something like this particular project and film it and put out a video for each of the days. Now, it's definitely been done, I would say in open water, but I don't think I've seen it done on the ice. 
And you know, this time of year, early ice, everybody is so excited. I think uh, this would just be a really good opportunity to put out a bunch of content that you guys are gonna be interested in instead of uh, spreading out. Like if I made 30 videos throughout the, the whole ice fishing season, by the time we get to midwinter, a lot of people are kind of sick of ice fishing. So why not just jam it all in right now? And uh, yeah, it's gonna be a really fun project that I'm kind of excited to try and embark on. It's one o'clock. We probably have another hour and a half to fish. So we're gonna jig. We don't have a lot of time to move at this point, but we have our dead sticks set up. We're seeing some fish and hopefully we get a, a few more bites before we have to head back and, and pick up the kiddos. Brett's gotta pick up his, his uh, little girl from, from uh, daycare, so. Uh, that was kind of embarrassing. <laughs> Just like the size of this fish. I was laying on my back, stretching it out because I'm old. And stretching out, saw the mark coming up on the graph, and sure enough, he actually ate. So I had to do, do the fat boy shuffle onto my legs quick to set the <laughs> I hope nobody saw that. I saw it. That's all that matters. I heard the pitter pattering. He's scurrying quick. Hey, one actually ate the jig and spoon. Look at that. Wrong size. Everyone on the dead sticks are like 18 to 20 inches, and then I catch these little runts, but signs of life. Miracles do happen. Yeah, I might just lay back down and do that again. Oh yeah. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna be honest. That's not the first time that I've seen Brett catch him from his back. It's definitely one of his <laughs> patented moves. <laughs> but yeah, I think uh, it's a bold strategy, Cotton. But it's paying off. You are allowed one over 17. It's just a thick, nice fish.